Hey everybody, this is Petey. Um, so, week two of my gardening blog. I know it's pretty late in the season, so I think it, I'm going to be doing more stuff geared towards, uh, um, you know, I guess late summer, early fall. Going to be late fall at this point and just talk about, you know, all the good things and uh, what I've been doing and how everything's been surviving basically without weeding at all without really maintaining just kind of doing some basic water watering and uh just to see how well uh, how, how good of a yield i do and i think i have a good idea for what i'm going to do to preserve at least my hydroponic rig my revolution garden rig over there and uh right over here my i don't know if i should greenhouse this i don't know if that'll be overly expensive i haven't really budgeted anything out yet and i i heard that plastic is rather expensive so i'm kind of intimidated by how i'm going to go about doing that considering it's my first year gardening ever but uh yeah let's let's take a look at everything shall we okay so as we're approaching the first square foot we're noticing a bunch of tomatoes those are still some nice green tomatoes. Might make some fried green tomatoes or even pickle them. Some of them are reaching the floor. Oh yeah, this I had like a line of uh, cucumber growing and like you can see right here, the leaves are practically brittle and dead at this point. And uh, I really don't know how to, uh, I don't know what happened there. They just kind of died. Actually, there's, there's a bit right here that's still, still kicking. Uh, I don't know for how long. Looks like it's going to start to uh, brown eventually because you obviously the line that it came from is no more. So I'm. Oh wow, a tomato. I didn't even notice this guy. I might give it a couple days to get a. Or maybe just another day to get a bit more red. Ripen up a little bit. It, but it's a little soft, so I might pick it sooner rather than later. Um, this is an eggplant, member of the nightshade family, as you know. But I don't know why it's red or orange. And I think something that I'm learning is that, well, for for a coarse, sandy soil, we, we thought we were getting some really nice soil this year, but apparently, I'm going to just pull this out, but apparently uh, uh, we didn't really have access to that, really. So... For, you know, crappy sand or sandy uh, um, soil. And like the fact, and another thing I'm noticing is that this needs to be a bit more raised so that the roots have more of that, uh, um, I don't know, more rooting. You know, more, more of an accessible uh, way of getting down past, but below, you know, what they need to further ground themselves, I mean, so that... Um, you don't get this leaned effect because that's what I'm noticing throughout the entire garden. Like this cannot stay stable. And like you, I'm just going to move this slightly. You see how right there, it's not like, it's very sandy. It's so basically uh, it'll conform to any shape that you put it into. It's not, it lacks permanence, I guess. I think I'm going to, this is a good time to pick this cucumber. I see another one over there. Oh, just gonna take that. <laughs> got a, got a pickle. <laughs> oh Jesus, stink bug. Oh crap. <laughs> I got, a, I had a stink bug on my arm. Uh, let's see, where could we move forward? I saw another one. I see one. I see another pickle. It's, it's back there. Let's get the pickle. Let's get the pickle. Reach in there into the forest and grab the pickle. There we go. That's good enough. Look at that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section. Are these pollination marks or is this just getting rotted or something? Leave your comments down below, because I'm not a... Remember, I'm a beginner, kind of, still. Getting a little intermediate. 
I mean, you put soil, you put seeds in the ground and, uh, you know, well, hope for the best, I guess. Water it regularly. I mean, it's not rocket science, but it's definitely, there's definitely a science to this that I haven't really wrapped my head around just yet. Well, there's these two. I'm gonna set these guys aside. I'm set these over here on the. Okay. Oh, there's another one. This is just like Easter. <laughs> Look at that pickle. It's a bit curvy. It's like a little smiley face. See, look. Hey guys. Hey, how you doing? It's a little smiley face. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put this over here. Add it to the pile. Add it to the pile. Okay. Oh, look at all these tomatoes. Completely taken over the Swiss chard, but mind you. I think I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do Swiss chard, I think I'm gonna do it in a separate area next to lettuce and stuff, uh, and other Swiss chards, cause that, the tomato just needs its own container, I'm feeling. Like, this whole square foot could just be tomatoes and cherry tomatoes and all that. Oh, we still got bees going. Look at that. I don't know if, did he fly away? Oh well. Okay, still some wilting over here. Some browning of the leaves. But it left us. I'm going to take this off before this rots. Uh, or, you know, does what nature does and plants itself. It's like a little pod to take care of the seeds and baby them so that they can uh, further grow. But we greedy humans take them before that they before they can do their natural process of uh, procreation so there you go it's like an aborted fetus right there take that vegans <laughs> that's bad all right let's see what we got going on i cannot get this thing to focus so I apologize for the crappy autofocus that this OS has to offer. Um, let's see what we got. Wow, these leaves are pretty big, but still diseased. Still diseased. Not a big deal. I mean, it's still grown some nice zucchines. Look at this one. Hey, look at this guy. Well, this one's getting kind of squishy, so I'm just a little squishy. Not too... Still firm. What a nice size zucchini. Not not like that giant one where you see me in my uh, bunny videos knighting Bambi for being a good bunny. Also, check out my potato. That is a potato plant, I believe. I believe it's a potato plant. And I'm surprised that it's actually growing up and, and doing well. Like, I just keep putting dirt on it and it just keeps going. Hopefully. Hopefully next time I'll be able to, like, or maybe I could just transplant this to, like, a larger cylindrical thing so I could continue hilling on it. Um, if anybody knows, like, like a very tall, like, 10-foot tall tube I could just put potato plants in to, like, continue hilling it, uh, let me know. Because, like, you know, this isn't exactly 10 feet tall, um, and I think a potato would definitely benefit from that hilling simulation type of thing. Something to engineer in the future, definite, definitely. So, I'm gonna take this back. Got a zucchini. There we go. It's like Easter, man. Little harvesting, Easter egg hunt of yum yums. Oh, this is a big zucchini. I think I'll pick this. Yeah, these are ready. Let's take it. Yeah, that fell off. That, that that instantly fell off, so that was definitely ready. Let's get the second zucchini. Okay. I just do a twist and pull. I don't know if there's a methodology I need to learn, but there you go. We got got two zucchinis going. Look at that. Yeah. Check it out, man. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Got to add that to the pile. Gonna put that over here. There we go, some zucchinis. Put... All right, stay doggies, stay. Okay. Oh, so this is like panel two, checking it out. There's a bunch of weeds that I haven't bothered weeding. See, I'm lazy when it comes to that. Like, I really didn't maintain it this summer. And because I kind of want to figure out how to not need to weed. I'm just going to pull these out. Like, these don't belong here at all. But, you know, definitely uh, we're the adversary to the, the peppermint. Maybe I should pick some peppermint. These are growing like weeds, so I'll take some. That way, I don't want to pull up the whole thing. Let me take some smaller plants of the peppermint. Some leaf. Some peppermint. That's tough to capture with the autofocus. Smelling it right now. Yeah, that smells like peppermint. It's like a little, it's like scented gum. Yummy. Or scented, flavored gum. Gonna put that over here back in the pile. All right, onward, onward in our foraging adventure. You know, I want to follow that guy that does the food foresting stuff and combine that with maybe like a hydroponic system, or like how to do like a winter garden later on. Um, Let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, there's another zucchini. There we go. Gonna, oh, that's a big chunk here, one. That's a big chunk of zucchini. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oof. It's firm, but, you know, a little squishy on this side. And I'm noticing, like, the yellowing. It's due to lack of sun, obviously, but, like, that's like this... It's also a spot to have like a weaker, I guess epidermis is the scientific word, uh, so that it can, you know, I guess inoculate the ground with its seed. That sounds kind of wrong when I say it like that. But it is, uh, that is Mother Nature. Be kind to Mother Nature, kids. All right, I'll bring this back. Oh, this pile is getting huge. All right, all right, here we go. So, some more zucchinis. <laughs> La da da da. Oh, there's another zucchini. That one's not giant yet, so I think I'll give it a maybe a week or so. I, I don't know if you can see that. It's like long-ish. It's got time. Oh, I see some baby cherry. Wow, did the cherry tomatoes make it all the way over here? Holy crap. Are these cherry tomatoes? What the hell? I planted these boys like a couple panels over. I can't believe they... If those... If I'm wrong, you know, like what are, what are these? What the heck are these? What are they doing in my, my garden? Get, uh, get out of it. But man, these cherry tomatoes are really invasive. Holy crap. It's good to see that this acorn squash growth is it's browning a little bit. And I think it's because it's getting colder out, also because it's diseased. But like, still staying strong, man. You know, I saw an acorn squash. Oh, this one's, oh, this one's bad. This one's completely squished out. Oh yeah, it's nice and squishy. Nice and squishy. So I think I might compost this, or I don't know. It's getting moldy. Could I eat this? I don't know if I could. I would try, but I I don't know if that's wise. I might die. So I think I'll compost this. I'll put this right here. It's originally a worm bin, but uh, there's no space to keep it at a temperature-regulated area so the worms can survive in 
So I just use it as compost. I'll probably revolutionize the composting in a later date, but I just need more space to do so. Um, let's see. Cherry tomatoes. All these are, well, most of these are cherry, that aren't weeds, are just cherry tomatoes. Like, and, and I'm noticing that they're just designed to, like, want to vine and crawl so that you get as close as you can to the ground so that you can, you know, they could do their thing, plant more seeds, procreate, all that good stuff. Um, so I, how to uh, uh, trellis those is, is something I didn't, is a learning curve I haven't gotten over yet because I'm not that very handy of a man, I'm more of a musician, but you know, pretty good, pretty good, man. Um, yeah, check this out. And this is uh, another testament of like, notice how everything is leaning. It's because there's no root foundation. I need something more of like a, a, ra a raised, raised bed. Like I can't have it just be uh, one two by four um, elevated because it's, it's not going to have that good of a foundation, obviously, because it's all leaning forward. And I think partially the leaning forward has to do with the fact that where the house is in reference to the southern sun. Southern sun is this way. Um, so they're trying to lean forward in order to get to that southern sun as much as possible. But, you know, resistance is futile because, you know, we got to leave space for the camper over there to get a car, get a car around, tow it from the camper outwards. It'd be more ideal if we did back there, I think. I think that'll be a good uh, uh, next year's plan. But for now, like, I'm perfectly fine. We've been having tons of cherry tomatoes in this summer. Too many tomatoes um, that we really know what to do with. And another pickling cucumber. Gonna grab that while it's nice and, nice and fat. Nice and fat and firm. That sounds wrong. <laughs> All right. Uh, these are definitely weeds. I, like this is like gonna be a tree at this point. I think I'm just gonna pull it out. I don't even know what this is. Leave your comments down below. What's this pink thing? Like about 16, 17 minutes in to this video. Like what is this? What is this thing? Is it? Am I? Should I wash my hands? Is this poisonous? I don't know enough about botany in order for me to continue forward. Uh, but you know, if it's if it could be used for something edible, that'll be cool. Um, but yeah, I think I should pull it out. I'll just leave it there. Let me know if I should pull it out or not, and I will. Um, let me know in the comments. You know, this stuff. I don't know what this is. Any of this stuff, like right here. It's just what what is this? This is how ignorant I am to the whole thing. Ooh, some cherry tomatoes. That's a nice red color. Do you see that? Look at that. I am just going to pull that out and I'm going to be like, hey man, that is a tomato. Yes, that is a tomato. That is a nice cherry tomato for you right here by the by the hills of the northeastern region. Oh, this one just fell off. Kind of wish the autofocus was better on this camera, but, you know, I'll take what I can get, man. Nice. So, let's continue on. Let's continue on. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Maybe this one? Can this one come? Hey, hey but that one right here. Maybe I'll take these. Yeah, these are fine. I'll pick them while they're good. Got four cherry tomatoes and uh, a flurry of a bunch more. I'm trying to hold this pickle and the phone <laughs> with my left hand while picking with the right. This is like, this is what I learned in occupational therapy when we were doing. Uh, dexterity stuff 
from my camera because I got the blue light filter on it they look redder than they actually are but I think you know they're actually more of like a not as ripe but you know honestly this is a nice red I'm I'm fine with how red these guys are for how late in the season it is and you know we started relatively late for the actually no we started kind of on time for these it wasn't exactly last winter frost it was more of like uh Maybe like a week after the last winter frost. That's like, uh, I think May 15th in this region. Um, holy crap. Hold on, I gotta put these tomatoes down. Give me a sec, folks. I found something yummy in my rumbly tumbly, quoting the world famous uh, Winnie the Pooh. And this video just got banned in China. <laughs> Don't mean to get political on you. Um, but holy crap. I think I'm just going to... Yeah, this acorn squash I might pick. Should I pick this acorn squash? I'll give it a day. I'll give it a day. It's still rather firm. I think I'm just paranoid from the fact that the other one just got rotted. And it was a small boy. He was a small boy. But look at that humongous zucchini. Am I going to have to pick this? Or could I leave it alone? These leaves are getting crappy. But, you know, it's almost creating a shield for this uh, zucchini. That's like, that's symbolism right there. The old withering mother taking care of the child. And I will take your child. Give me a child. Destroy the child. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. Oh God! Okay, here we go. Ah, look at that! A big floppy flower thingy. You can actually put this thing in a salad, I think. Oh, hold on, let let this thing auto focus. There we go. Yeah, high def. Look at that. This is like, I think you could put this flower in like a a salad or a tea. I don't know. You could probably put it in a salad and it'll be good. It won't look nice, but, you know, it definitely uh, is nutritious. But look at that zucchini. That is a nice zucchini. To, to say the first, the whole name. It, no, wait, zucchini, would that be plural? Kind of like ravioli? Like zucchini? I just say zucchini because it's, I don't know. Leave your comments down below, folks. I can't say that enough, kids. I need attention. I'm a, I'm a YouTuber. I need, I need attention. I gotta, didn't get enough. Look at the spread on that, man. I'll, I'll clean this off later and I'll do a final spread of this, these bad boys. Um, let's see. Let us see. Okay, yeah, acorn squash, we're gonna, gonna leave that alone. So this is like number four, that's number three. You know, it's gonna be one, two, three, starting from the camper side to this way. So here's number four. I don't know what to do with this whole back session, section. The Swiss chard has no hope. The marigolds are doing well. I'm surprised how like, strong the flowers are still going marigolds are strong man so i learned when researching coaching companion plants but this year is about companion plants and what works with what and i think if i densely populated these guys a lot more like what i did with the uh revolution garden over there i think i'll have more of a beneficial and i had better soil with you know more of a raised bed i think you know we'd be in way better business than we are um but considering you know all of the variables this is not bad at all like i'm actually pretty proud that i was able to get anything <laughs> um now let's let's bushwhack through this giant jungle of of uh acorn squash goodness and zucchini plant i can't even like I think that's why I sometimes miss these guys, cause like, whoa, whoa, check it out. <clears throat> Something whipped whip me in the face. Let's 
two acorn squashes. That's nice. I'll let those cook for a couple days. And then I'll pick them. Um, or I could just pick them now. I, you know, but I don't want it to get like that guy. Like I said before, I don't want it to get like that guy. Um, as of now, I think that's pretty much everything that I can get at today. I'll, I'll leave the Swiss chart alone, but, you know, I think the way that, like, how overcrowded the weeds have gotten, um, I don't know if it's, it's a good idea to maybe greenhouse these guys. Like, if I'm going to greenhouse these guys, I think, I'll like, next year, I'll do something, like, over here. Or maybe even start, like, the end of this summer, maybe transplant them. But, um, as of now, like... I don't know. I think I'll just let them, let them go. Let them. Maybe I'll, the least I could do is just put some frost cloth around these guys. Go get these guys. Let this guy go. It's not as red yet. These guys are. Um. <laughs> oh, you got another zucchini growing up there. Um, looks like a wiener. <laughs> um. It'll uh, give it a couple, maybe I'll give it a week or two. See how good that goes. But yeah, I'll leave the acorn squashes alone for a couple days, and I think we're good with this section of the gardening endeavor. So, oh wait. Oh, there's another blossoming zucchini and some flowers still. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think we got pretty much everything we can. Um... I don't know about this red eggplant, this reddish orangey eggplant. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions on what I should do with this eggplant, should I just take it, pick it, and because uh, it's so late in the season, or should I just keep letting it go and uh, allow it to, uh, I guess, prosper more? Let me know what you guys think of the of this eggplant um, about. You know, like 20, 25 minutes in to the video. Probably post-production. Um, same thing with this one, the purple one. Like, it's a, probably supposed to be a lot bigger than it is. Same thing with that one back there. But should I just pick it or no? Um, all right. Well, that seems like everything. I'll give it a... I'll do one more side-by-side -side shot, uh, panning of all the stuff we've gathered, and uh, yeah, then we'll move on to the Revolution Garden. All right, see you soon. Hey everybody, I just got done weeding the uh, Revolution Garden and uh, you know, I've kind of sit, I kind of sat on my hands for a lot of this stuff, but I'm, you know, like I said in the last video, I'm very satisfied with how lazy I can be with this system. You know, there's still some uh, aging, there's still some lack of nutrients that I'm noticing from learning from the Revolution Garden manual, but uh, you know, Based on what I'm learning as a beginner and getting in too much of a analysis paralysis, you know, it takes me a while to do things because I think too much. Um, you know, even just weeding later on in the game, I still feel like that this is a well thriving area and this has some work to do, but you know, I'm gonna further inoculate it with stuff. I also noticed like I got some like dead, decrepit kale that like. You know, I don't know, just died off, you know, as as you look into the system a bit more. There's some weed growth in the back. I can't really reach back there because of, you know, where I'm standing on. I lost a shoe. <laughs> but, um, so I've just been, like, anytime I caught one of these kales, I just kind of snack on them. I'm going to have one now. 
actually. Yummy. So, oh yeah, by the way, here's the result of all the weeding that I've done. All the weeding, all the thinning, just to make sure that this is, uh, this system is well optimized and uh, then I'll inoculate it with uh, some extra nutrients to help these guys go. I think what I'm going to do with these guys, with uh, this weeded stuff, there's still nutrients in them. So, I think, you know, the silver lining is that I could just compost them and recycle them back into the system if I go to make a compost tea with them. I'm like chewing on the kale as I'm trying to explain what I'm going to do. But yeah, that's a lot of stuff that I had to weed out and thin out and uh, make sure that this would thrive now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my tiny green monsters and the, um, the formula that was recommended to me by James Fry of the Revolution Garden program. And uh, I'll show you that in a sec. I got to climb down to the reservoir real quick. So I'll see you in a, in a quick second, folks. Stay tuned for more of this leafiness. Yeah, look at that. Leafs. So here we are. Gotta wait. I gotta have this autofocus. The autofocusing is kind of going crazy because of the reflection off the water. But here we are at the reservoir, and I'm gonna add some of my my secret formula, some of my tiny green monsters to the mix. And uh, you know, you normally don't do this in the program, but I have to inoculate them because, like I said in the last video, the uh, type of soil that's required of me to get for these tiny green monster goobies. Um, they're not, that soil wasn't available because of how the uh, uh, market demands for gardening materials skyrocketed. It was uh, something that none of the uh, local gardening shops thought would happen, but considering that COVID-19 is a special case, you know, they are well in supply now, but it, I already set up the system. So it would have been in the soil up here in the grow bed, but uh, you know, I just got a supplement with these guys. So they're the tiny green monsters. Now give me a sec. And here is the formula that was, uh, you know, told to me. It's not, it's not Italian soda, by the way. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you that much. It's not Italian soda, but uh, <laughs> here's the formula that was recommended to me by James Fry, and it's actually uh, gonna make these guys go a lot more. I wanted to put in a big dose after I weeded a bunch um, to really get these guys, give these guys more of a fighting chance. Come on, we got to give these guys a fighting chance. So uh, here's to you and your gro happy growing for you fellow gardeners out there. Mazel tov, here we go. Salud. Whatever your culture is. I'm just gonna add a crap ton in here. This is probably gonna be excessive, but uh glug 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 glug. But it, okay, that's way more than half. That's probably that's probably way overkill, but I've I've neglected this system so much that I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> Screw it. You know, and then Next week, we'll see what happens. So, until next time on Revolution Garden Vlog Thingy. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Um, hopefully, I get more success out of it, even though it's late in the season. But uh, stay tuned. I'll post this every week. Going to make this channel more of a variety channel. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to compost this crap. I'm going to put all my tools and toys away and uh yeah we'll reconvene in a week or so stay tuned folks